Hi guys. So you're all pros now at cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is what we've been talking about, what happens in the mitochondria, and it's how organisms make energy from their food, from sugars, right? But remember that cellular respiration happens in the mitochondria, and it uses oxygen. Not all organisms have mitochondria, and not always is oxygen present. So there's another kind of respiration called anaerobic respiration or fermentation that some organisms use. So we're just going to talk about some of the differences and similarities between the two of these for a couple minutes. So first of all, let's review aerobic respiration or cellular respiration. Aerobic means with oxygen. So this is happening, like we said, with oxygen. All eukaryotes have mitochondria, so all eukaryotes can do cellular respiration. But sometimes there's not oxygen present, so they'll do anaerobic respiration. Cellular respiration, aerobic respiration happens in the mitochondria. Remember that organelle with the folded up inner membrane to increase the surface area? It uses oxygen. So oxygen is one of the things that comes into the process. It comes in, it's a reactant in the equation. And one glucose molecule is going to yield 36 to 38 ATP. Remember those are the energy molecules for the cell? So that's a whole bunch. So one glucose gives us lots of energy in cellular respiration. So again, the equation is glucose and oxygen come in as reactants, and then the products of cellular respiration are carbon dioxide, water, and that energy, the 36 to 38 ATP. Now let's contrast that with anaerobic respiration or fermentation. You've probably heard the word fermentation before. This happens in prokaryotes. Prokaryotes have to do anaerobic respiration or fermentation to make their energy because they don't have mitochondria. And then eukaryotes can do it when they don't have oxygen present. In this, since there's no mitochondria on prokaryotes, it's just going to happen in the cytosol, so in that soup of the cell. And again, it does not use oxygen. In fermentation, one glucose only yields two ATP. So compared to cellular respiration, that's way, way less. So it's way less efficient. So eukaryotes, whenever they can, whenever oxygen is present, they're going to do cellular respiration. But if they need to, they'll do uh, fermentation if they really need that energy. So the equation here is that glucose comes in, no oxygen coming in, remember. It yields carbon dioxide and water. And then it depends on whether we're looking at um, plants or animals, um, whether the byproduct is alcohol or lactic acid. So those are two different kind of byproducts that can happen with fermentation. So in plants... Um, they re release alcohol, ethyl alcohol, and so you've some examples that you're probably familiar with, things like um, making wine or even soy sauce, um, some breads, that um, has a byproduct of alcohol. And then in animals, lactic acid is released, um, and that's an example that you can relate to with that is with your muscles. When you are doing um, exercises that require lots and lots of energy really, really fast, and you can't keep up with um, bringing in enough oxygen, things like sprinting or lifting heavy weights, what happens is your body switches over to doing fermentation instead of cellular respiration when there's not enough oxygen, and lactic acid is produced. And when lactic acid builds up, it can make your muscles sore. So you might have um, experienced that before. And then in other organisms like bacteria, they release um, different byproducts also. So Glucose is going to come in, carbon dioxide and water are going to come out, and then a byproduct. And so I want you to be familiar with alcohol and lactic acid as the two byproducts from uh, plants and animals. Have a great night.